W E A F New York. of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with friends, good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with Red Foley, Jeanette, Edna Stilwell, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and Red Skelton. The orchestra opens the program with the ladies in love with you. <laughs> more and more smokers are discovering that Avalon cigarettes are something entirely new and different. They're a quality cigarette that sells for less, three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Never has a price so low bought this unexcelled Avalon quality, a quality made possible by the perfect blending of the world's finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. You'd never guess that Avalon's cost you less, and if you want the money you spend for your cigarettes to bring full value, switch to Avalon. Avalon's give you so much and cost you so little. Why not pick up a pack tonight? that a farmer puts his corn in a bin and a mountaineer puts his corn in a jug. But now we bring you the only man in radio who has put corn in a script, <laughs> Red Skelton. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Dell, you waited here long enough for a laugh that we uh, put in a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I wish you wouldn't refer to my jokes, though, as being corny. Oh, you know, I'm really sorry about that, Red. Well, don't really let it happen have. again. <laughs> By the way, uh, what are you talking about tonight? Well, I have a few jokes about Father's Day. Oh, a little popcorn tonight, eh? <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, you know what Father's Day is. That's the day when everybody rushes down to see who'll buy Pop the nicest present. But it usually winds up a tie. <laughs> Last Father's Day, I, I took my dad to the ball game. <laughs> it was so far to the ballpark, time we walked there, he was too tired to climb over the fence. <laughs> Boy, does he get excited at ball games? He got real excited, no kidding, and threw a bottle at the umpire. <laughs> of course, everybody throws bottles at the umpire, but this one had a baby on it. <laughs> My father got out of the mess, though. He's a lawyer. Okay, my father's a good lawyer, too. In fact, he has his own ambulance. <laughs> I feel great tonight, though. I just got back from uh, New York City where I was guest of honor at Lowe State Theater for one day. 
When the people found out I was at Lowe's State, boy, what business they did. In fact, the manager had the ropes out three times. He's gonna hang himself. <laughs> the manager and I split the gate receipt. He got the receipts and gave me the gate. <laughs> I don't know, but they announced over the microphone, Red Skelton in person. The band played the Port and Peasant Overture, the curtain went up, I walked out of the center of the stage, and the entire audience rose to its feet as one man. <laughs> of course, there was only one man in the audience. But... <laughs> I said to the fellow, I said, well, to show you I'm a regular fellow, I'll do my act. He said, well, make it snappy. I'm the janitor, and I want to clean up. <laughs> I had a lot of fun in New York. Uh, I had a tough time getting a hotel room, this being National Hotel Week, a lot of conventions, but I finally found one. The room was air conditioned. <laughs> Every five minutes, a midget walked by and blew in the keyhole. <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> thanks a lot, both of you. Had <laughs> applause over there. It was very weak, but I heard it. <laughs> the hotel was beautiful, though. We had, uh, indirect lighting from the YMCA sign across the street. <laughs> I was in the gold room. They called it the gold room because the wallpaper was turning yellow. <laughs> but it was... <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I heard it that time. <laughs> yeah, I should rehearse that before the shows from now on. I'm not going to take any more chances. But uh, it's really a very expensive hotel. Now, again, they had one of those big Louis XIV beds. It was genuine, too. In fact, it was so genuine, the termites were chew chewing with a French accent. <laughs> I kind of chewed that up myself. But what's that? Well, that's the orchestra telling me it's time for their version of Jungle Drums. Take it away, Bob Strong. Hit it, boy. <laughs> Going there, Bob Strong, really swell. Well, Dell, it's really good to be back on the program. But you haven't been away, Red. I know, but la after last week's show, it's good to be back on the program again. <laughs> well, um, 
Red, uh, I uh, hope you won't mind this, but... Uh, uh, I've written a little sketch for tonight's program. A sketch? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, Dell. At 7.45, I've got to leave. I'm going to a class reunion at my college. College? Yeah. Did you go to college, Red? Certainly. What college you go to? Uh, Nursey uh, University. Nursey University? <laughs> I never heard of the place. What, you never heard tell of Nurse to you? <laughs> oh, so you're a college man, eh, Skelton? Yep, and I got a diploma to prove it. Since when did they start giving out diplomas at reform school? <laughs> Did you say that, Del? No, that was Roger, the fiddle player again. Ah, that fiddle player. He don't lay off of me. He'll be trading that fiddle for a harp. You, you better be careful of him, Red. He's plenty tough. Yeah? Well, he could beat you up anytime. He could? Sure. He wouldn't dare. <laughs> Why, I'd beat him until he couldn't stand up. He guy's a coward. You want me to prove it? Hey, Roger, how do you like a punch in the nose? How would you like a punch in the nose? I asked you first. <laughs> Say, Red, uh, while you were at college, did you study the classics? Yeah, I studied the classics. <clears throat> Do you know Carmen? Oh, certainly. What has she been doing lately? <laughs> Hiya, boys. Hiya, oh, Edna. <laughs> Say, you're just in time to hear the news. Don't tell me that the G-men rescued Vim Gump. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got a letter from my old college. What college? Nurse to you. Well, nurse to you, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of the college. They want me to come back and pay them a visit. And last year's board bill. Come in. Uh, Miss Stillwell? Yes? I'm here to collect a bill for the dress you bought at my shop. My name is Barry. You must be a gooseberry to send me your bill, Barry, before it's due, Barry. Your father, the elderberry, would have more sense. You may look very blackberry and feel very blueberry, but I don't give a strawberry for you and your bill, Barry. Oh. Well, for that, you get the raspberry. <laughs> it ain't good, folks, but it's clean. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, uh here comes Bob Strong, right? <laughs> oh, Bobby. Yeah, I don't know what you see in that guy. He's so tight when you go out with him, he leaves his suspenders and belt at home so he can keep his hands in his pockets. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello there, Bob. <laughs> well, if it ain't old special arrangement Strong. <laughs> What's going on out here? Well, I was just telling the gang, I'm going back to my college reunion. Just think of it, Skelton. What? Yesterday, you were a little boy at college, and mm. today, you're a man. Mm. You certainly have grown up. Yeah. How else could he grow? <laughs> Say, uh... <laughs> I'll tell the jokes on this program from now on. <laughs> Say, did you go to college, Bob? Me? Yeah. Well, I matriculated at one of the foremost institutions of advanced education. Yeah, none of that stuff. Answer the question. <laughs> Yes, I went to college. Ah, yeah. oh, college. The happiest days of my life were spent at Vassar. What a weekend. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hiya, Red Bull. Hi. Happy birthday. Thanks, Today thanks is a lot. Red Bull's birthday, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Say, did you get any presents? Any presents? Yeah, we got one from Papa. You did? Yeah, but tomorrow's Father di Father's Day, so I gave it back to him. <laughs> did he like it? Like it? Drink every drop. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Say, what are y'all talking about anyway? Well, I'm going back to college. Oh, talking about college? That's right. Say, I don't like that at all. Why not? For four reasons. Four? In the, in the first place, I didn't go to college. And in the second place, I don't care whether you went to college or not. In the third place, I am against colleges. Yeah. What's in fourth place? Brooklyn Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Don't go away. We got another line here. Wait <laughs> Say, where did you get that gag, anyhow? Just looked down at the script, and there it was. <laughs> Oh, the good old Red Foley there. Happy birthday. Hello, hello, Mrs. Gelton. Oh, hello. How'd you get in the studio? Oh, uh, on this ticket? That's not a ticket. That's a streetcar transfer. A streetcar transfer? Yeah. Well, well, it's good until 8 o'clock. <laughs> so is this program good until 8 o'clock? It wasn't last week. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't doing bad this week, either. You keep quiet, Roger. Well, Red, you know it's time for you to leave for college. Oh, thanks a lot, Dell. And while Jeanette sings, if I didn't care, I'm going to make a quick trip to Nerdster University. Come on, gang. Sing it, Jeanette. If 
I didn't care More than words can say If I didn't care Would I feel this way If this isn't love Then maybe I'm wrong But why do I lie awake all night and dream Would it be the same? Would my every prayer begin and end with just your name? And would I be sure that this is love beyond compare? Would all this be true if I didn't care for? quality plus real money-saving economy. That's the amazing story of Avalon cigarettes. Highest quality because Avalons are made from the very finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos obtainable, blended to perfection. Real money-saving economy because Avalons cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands, a saving that will net you many, many extra dollars every year. When any cigarette offers such outstanding advantages, such distinct points of superiority, ah, they're certainly worth a trial. Why not pick up a pack tonight? You'd never guess they cost you less. We now take you to Nurse University, where Red Skelton is dean for a day and Edna Stilwell is his secretary. Here they are in the dean's office. Good afternoon, Nurse the University. Is Wather Wahoo? All right, you fresh thing. Practice your college yell some other time. <laughs> Hello. Just a moment, I'll tell him. Mr. Skelton, yes? the dean's waiting for you outside, and the dean is waxing Roth. Yes. Yeah. Is Roth outside too? <laughs> well, tell Roth to wax the dean for a while. <laughs> Ah, uh, good old nerdster. Say, Miss Stilwell, how would you like to take a walk with me? Okay. Come on. Ah, uh, this is the com campus of our college. Do I see a student over there? Is that a student over there? Well, I ain't a thing, don't that it's from Dumas. Thank you, Lee my old college show. And huh? oh, Mr. Skelton, I'm terribly glad to see you. Yeah. I'm writing a letter home to Papa. <laughs> Can you tell me how to spell financially? Financially? Finance, uh, take it, Edna. <laughs> F-I-N-A-N-C-I-A-L-L-Y. Yeah, and there's two R's and embarrassed. <laughs> hey, Herc, you mean to tell me you're still in college? Oh, yes, Mr. Skelton. I'm still academically connected with this little old school here. <laughs> Well, you were here when I got here, and you were here when I left. And five years later, I returned, and you're still here. Yeah, ain't I the one, though? <laughs> so why do you keep staying here? Well, you see, every year, they keep printing my picture in the college annual. Yeah. And I look so cute, I just hate to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what are you studying now, Herky? Well, I'm studying foodology. Foodology? Yes, you see, I can read your mind and tell what you are by what you eat. Oh, you can? Yes. Well, let's see. For breakfast this morning, I had uh, grapefruit, frog legs, smothered in mushrooms, a bottle of champagne, and three cantaloupes. Well, you're either a millionaire or an awful glutton. <laughs> and I know you're not a millionaire. <laughs> what are you doing now, Mr. Skelton? Uh, I'm a radio comedian. You are? Mm-hmm. Well, is it hard to find honest work? 
<laughs> Haven't you heard me on the air, Herky? You oh, have. sure thing. Too true. Some stuff you've got, I'll say. Oh, <laughs> Thing as a college man, what do you think of me on the air? Well, Mr. Skelton, from a reprehensible viewpoint, you contaminate the ozone that permeates the stratospherical susquipedenical vitupidic Wait a minute, without... wait a minute, wait. What does that mean? Well, in other words, confidentially, you... Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, you asked for it, and anyway, the dean wants me to whitewash the bells and the steeple. So I guess I'll go and wash out a few dings. I'll see you. <laughs> Good old Herky. He thinks the golden opportunity is a blonde. <laughs> Come to think of it, maybe he's not so dumb at that. What's that building over there? Well, that's the museum building. Ah, it brings back a lot of, muse uh, lot of memories to me. <laughs> what kind of memories, Red? Well, just a couple of years ago when I was a kid in college, I remember one afternoon in class. Very well, students. Uh, Mr. Straw, uh, your lessons aren't done today. Uh, uh, where'd you go last night? To the movies with a girl. You go home for a week. Uh, Mr. King, where were you last night? Out parking with a girl. Well, go home and stay for two weeks. Oh, where are you going, Mr. Skelton? Professor, my college days are over. <laughs> never mind, uh, never mind. Uh, uh, we'll step out in the hall to okay. study today. Boy, this is the biggest old hall I've ever seen in my life. Uh, students, uh, now as we enter this room, I ask you to notice the inscription over the entrance. Stick. Transit Gloria. Sick Transit Gloria? Yes, yes. Mm. Sick Transit Gloria. Uh, what comes after Gloria? Swanson? I mean... <laughs> no, no. Latin follows Gloria. Well, I can't say that I blame him. <laughs> now, as we enter the room, uh, we find this is a room on Egyptology. The what, Professor? The room on Egyptology. These are mummies. Where did your mother get them? <laughs> no nonsense, young woman. We are we are able to tell the innocent mummies by their garb. The garb in which the stone, and if the mummy is decorated with garb, decorated with garbage. <laughs> now as you know, now as you know, uh, these mummies, these mummies died. Women who died and were wrapped in yards and yards of cloth bandages. These mummies are all dated. It says, uh, it says, old uh, 9 B.C. Is it an, is it an, is it a hit-up? <laughs> help, help, help! Here comes a hysterical panhandler, I think. What seems to be the trouble, lady? Can I be of any assistance? I've lost my husband. Yeah, what'd he look like? He had a mustache. Did you see him? No, we haven't seen him yet. All we've seen is the mummies and the stuffed animals. <laughs> <laughs> He must be someplace. I come here every afternoon with him. Say, this is a museum for the students. I know. He's taking a postgraduate course. And he's interested in some old fossil. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry, lady. It's probably some harmless flirtation. <laughs> attention, attention, students. What is it? Now, uh, this is a replica of the glaciers. Listen closely, Mr. Skelton. Yeah. The glaciers were large pieces of ice that came down from the north and brought huge stones and rocks with them. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you understand that, sir? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. I understand that. Then, Mr. Skelton, what were glaciers? Well, the glaciers were big hunks of ice that came down and brought hunks of rocks and stone with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, where are the glaciers now? They went back after more rocks. <laughs> The singers, Red Foley and the Avalon Chorus. The song, Ride, Tenderfoot, Ride. Ride, tenderfoot, ride tonight. See the old range riders there at your side tonight. There 
So if you want to be a cowboy, then you got to ride Tenderfoot Ride. Tenderfoot Ride. You got to hit the trail in Oklahoma when the moon is pale. And get to Texas with the morning mail. Or you can be a cowboy. You gotta rope and throw. You gotta get your share of buffalo. And win the money at the rodeo. Or you can be a cowboy. Remember, friends, when you can get supreme quality in Avalon's for less, why pay more? Next time, ask for Avalon. And don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cost several cents less than others. You too can save this difference like all of us Avalon brothers. Each pack is wrapped in cellophane, each pack is union made. No wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon's need the parade. So why not always travel on? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's costs only 10 cents plus city or state tax. Well, I guess we're right down the groove, eh, Dell? Yes, Red, that winds it up. Hey, Skelton. Oh, what do you want, my foolish fiddler? I've been trying to figure something out. What's that? Strong leads a band, That's Tony right. and Janetta singers, and Edna Stilwell's a clever actress. Yeah. But what are you on this program? Me? I'm a comedian. Boy, I'll bet the audience is glad to find that out. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the use? Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks a lot for listening. next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Del King speaking. Good night. The selection, The Ladies in Love with You, is from Some Like It Hot. This program will come to you from the NBC studios in Chicago. This is the National Broadcasting Company.
W-E-A-F, New York, 9...